A recent investigation has revealed that the former FIA president, Max Mosley, killed himself last year. He was once the most respected man in the sport, but it all came crashing down with a single video. What was it that drove him to suicide? What was the sex scandal that ruined his career? And how is it connected to Adolf Hitler? Stay tuned to find out all that and more. So who is Max Mosley? Max Mosley climbed to the top of Formula One and became president of the FIA. But how did he get involved in motorsport to begin with? Max Mosley was from a big, rich family. His ancestry is from an English nobility. And when we say noble, we mean noble. He was the third cousin of Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and he was the fifth cousin of Queen Elizabeth. It doesn't get much higher than that. He grew up comfortably and went to Oxford University to study physics before becoming a barrister. While he was at Oxford, he went to a motor race and fell in love with the sport. He went on to compete in Formula 2, but never made it to Formula 1. Instead, he decided to set up a racing team with three other racing enthusiasts, which they called March Engineering. Although they didn't have too much success in F1, the team was a starting point for some of the sport's big names, including three-time world champion Nicky Lauda. Mosley left the team when he started dedicating most of his time to the Formula 1 Constructors Association, which was a group set up to work out problems between F1 teams and represent their interests. He came to have a leading role for the group and represented them in legal battles with F1's governing body, FISA. He helped design the Concord Agreement, which is still used in F1 today. FISA were so impressed by him that they appointed him to be president a few years later. From there, he moved up even higher in the ranks and became the president of the FIA, which controls almost all the world's championship motorsports. Now, what is he going to do with power? Now, let's talk about Mosley's FIA legacy. Max Mosley left a big impact on Formula One. He pioneered safety reforms, fairness, and promotion of the sport. But his career was not without controversy. Early on, he gave his longtime colleague and friend Bernie Ecclestone the commercial rights to Formula One. This meant that he would profit heavily from arranging the broadcasting of the sport, which helped balloon his net worth to over $3 billion. He also helped drive forward safety in cars through the FIA's involvement with the European New Car Assessment Program. In 2000, a report found that the program had been the most important mechanism for achieving advances in vehicle safety. But it wasn't all smooth sailing for Mosley. At the 2005 US Grand Prix, the FIA were deadlocked with the teams of the grid over a technicality, which resulted in only six cars starting the race. The dispute was over changing a certain corner of the track to make it safer for Michelin tires, which were dangerously failing there. Mosley refused to compromise and was branded the most farcical race in F1 history. Mosley was also head of the FIA during the 2007 and Spygate affair, where it was proven that McLaren had been illegally giving intellectual property from Ferrari. He was now in his late 60s, and it looked like that would be the biggest scandal he would face. From then on, it would be gentle retirement, right? That's never how it ends. Unfortunately for Mosley, it was him who was at the center of the biggest F1 scandal the following year, and it couldn't have had anything less to do with motor racing. So, why did Mosley take his own life? When he died in 2021, it was first reported that it was from his long battle with cancer, but an investigation into his death revealed that he shot himself. Mosley had been diagnosed with lymphoma and told that he would never recover. Worse than that, he was told that he had just weeks to live. He described himself as suffering from debilitating pain and that he was very uncomfortable with his quality of life. A doctor who was treating Mosley said that he had not shown any suicidal tendencies and that he seemed to be in relatively good spirits. He was talking about the future and recently started a treatment of antidepressant drugs to manage his feelings. Apparently, he told people close to him that he had decided to commit suicide and there was nothing they could do to stop him. They respected his choice because he had been diagnosed with only weeks to live anyway. Anyway, he returned to his apartment from the hospital and the policeman who found the suicide, not in his apartment, said that he was covered in blood. He could make out the words, I feel I have no choice. Mosley decided to go out on his own terms, just like he lived most of his life. Bernie Ecclestone paid tribute to Mosley and said that it was like losing a brother. Mosley's replacement as president of the FIA, John Todt, said that the entire FIA community pays tribute to him. Teams like McLaren and Williams also posted messages on their social media, reminding fans that he made some big positive changes to the sport. But unfortunately, it's not his legacy at the FIA he is most remembered for. What was the sex scandal that ended his career? And what did he dedicate the rest of his life to after Formula One? Don't go anywhere because all that is coming right up. It all started when the weekly tabloid called the News of the World releasing a shocking video on their website in early 2008. It showed Max Mosley in his very, very personal life. He was playing out some kind of sexual fantasy with five other women. But that wasn't even the shocking part. The shocking part was that, according to this news outlet, the sexual fantasy was some kind of Nazi role-playing. For anyone else, this would sound too too bizarre to be true. But the one thing that really didn't help Mosley's case was that his father had been head of the British Fascist Party. Yep, that's right. His father was Sir Oswald Mosley, who was a member of the Conservative Party and then the Labour Party, before leaving them both to declare himself a proud fascist. And he wasn't just any
any fascist. He had his wedding in front of Adolf Hitler in Germany at the home of Joseph Goebbels. You can't get much more fascist than that. So that's one reason there was so much attention paid to the story. Like father like son? Well, Mosley denied it strongly. He took the newspaper to court on the same year and the judge ruled that there was no strong evidence that the gathering was Nazi themed. And instead, it was a standard s &M prison scenario. I wouldn't exactly use the word standard to describe the scenario, but each to their own I guess. He won the case and was awarded £60,000, but the damage was already done. His reputation was destroyed and there were very few people willing to publicly defend him. The next year, he decided not to run for president of the FIA again and effectively ended his involvement with Formula One. Now the battle with Google giants. But Mosley wasn't done just yet. He didn't just blame the newspaper for publishing the video, he also blamed one of the biggest companies in the world. What do you do if you hear some shocking news and you want to know more? First things first, you punch it into Google and click search. Mosley learned this the hard way. He was determined to remove any evidence of the video from the internet, but he soon found that the problem wasn't actually the websites that hosted the video, but the search engines like Google that directed people to it. He set his targets on Google and took them to court in France, Germany, and the UK. He won the first two cases and the third case was settled out of court. From then on, he became a privacy advocate who spoke out against the power of that search engines have. He said in 2011 that what happens with privacy is that once they have revealed the private information, no power on earth can make it private again. That's why he was fighting hard to change laws that would stop a lot of this information from being published at all. Mosley later went to court again, this time against the tabloid The Daily Mail. They had published some letters that were allegedly written by him when he was at university and had some racist messaging in them. This time he lost, but it was part of a much bigger war against the press that he devoted the last part of his life to. For a retired lawyer, he certainly had his hands full with a lot of court cases. What do you think about Max Mosley's legacy? Is it tarnished by the sex scandal? Let us know what you think about it in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.